So, hi everyone. Um, today we're going to look at strings, which is chapter 14 for R for data science. And yeah. Oops. So basically what we're going to look at, we're going to focus on the, the basics first. Then from the basics, we'll look at uh, some ways of matching patterns with uh, regular expressions or regex. Then we try to look at uh, what, what, what we're calling tools, but it's more of like um, applications, how to, how, how to apply this, this, this knowledge to, to certain things. Uh, then from that, uh, we shall conclude with some other kinds of, of, of matching, of pattern matching, and um, other uses of regular expression, which are really, which, which are really small, small parts of this chapter. Okay. So just a small introduction. Uh, the main focus here is us to understand how strings actually work and how we can work with the strings in, in different scenarios. And uh, so here we, we, we trying to, we're also going to focus on uh, regular expressions or regex, which is uh, kind of like a concise language for describing patterns in strings. So two things, the strings and how to describe patterns in strings. And we're going to use um, the string R package for, for, for string manipulation, which is part of uh, the core tidyverse. So whenever you load the tidyverse package, it's going to come with st string R. So let's start with the basics. So the, 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 the main thing to understand here is um, how you can create it. What, what is a string, first of all, and how you can create a string. So here, by just looking at how you create this string, you, we, 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 we know what, what a string is, basically. But uh, we create a string with two quotation marks or, or single quotations. But uh, it's, it's always better to, to use um, uh, two, two quotations. Most, most of the time, but uh, you can always change depending on what you want to, to represent. Um, yes, so, but now the question is that, uh, how about if you want to represent um, a, a, single, a, a single double quote or uh, a, a single quotation mark in, in a string? We can do this by what we call escaping it. So we escape by, by using um, this, uh, forward slash. This keeps on uh, confusing me, but it's, it's a forward slash. Uh, so like, like this here, when you have uh, this example, double quote or single quote. So here we're trying to represent uh, the double quote in a string. Um, okay, so here the the the, the, the normally the, this this box this this uh back. O escaping can actually be used to do different things. It can be used to 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 create certain special characters. Uh, for example, the, when 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 we're trying to show the double quotes or single quotes, it can also be used to show uh, things like new line or indicate like a tab or space. And there, if you go to to the space to the to the help section in R, you can actually see whatever ways you 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 can use. Uh, these double quotes or, or slashes or forward slashes or single quotes. Um, okay, so we can on, we can all, since we can create, of course, a single a single string. We can also create multiple strings um, as, as as a vector, and we we do this by the normal way of creating a vector uh, using the C, and we put everything in brackets, as you can see down here. So that's something I think we've we've seen uh, already. Uh, but it's also going to be important in, in, in a few slides later on. Just if you think about uh, the strings as part of a vector, then we're moving towards the way we use data normally. Um, yes, so uh, the, the string R package has so many different functions. Uh, for example, the first one is uh, uh, string length, string underscore length or str underscore length. And all of them, all, all these functions actually start with str and underscore and, and something like that. So if, if you actually just write, start in your R studio and start by writing str underscore, 
you can um, um, uh, press the tab, the tab button, and you get all these options here. Um, so for example, you have things like uh, string to upper, converting something to upper, converting something to lower case, uh, converting something to title, to, to, to title formats, like every, every letter, for example, is going to be um, uh, capitalized. Every first letter of the word in a sentence is going to be capitalized. You can sort and, uh, and order the, the, the words uh, uh, in, 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 in a given sentence or in a given string, for example. So, so many different things that you can do. Uh, one thing to note also is that very many of these functions have um, another extension, which is all, underscore all. And uh, it, 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 it's going to, I think I'll mention it later on, why, why we, when, when to use the underscore all. All right, so still doing uh, uh, the, the basics for strings. And uh, here what we're looking at is combining strings. How do we combine strings in R? So basically, it's always, I think I found this one very much easier to look at the examples to, to know what's happening under the hood. Uh, so here, if you have, uh, we use str underscore c to, to combine strings. And if you have two strings like this, uh, the one with only x and another one with y, you can combine those two strings with just um, a comma and a space in this case. As you, as you can see down here. But they, they, this, kind of, um, uh, this, this kind of behavior or fun function changes when we actually um, trying to apply str underscore on a, a vector of strings. So when we're trying to do this kind of combining, actually what happens is that str underscore c operates on every item of a vector. It is vectorized. So every item of a vector is going to be, uh, uh, is going to be an input for this function. So that is why uh, the, the behavior of the second example is actually different from the behavior of the first example. So in the first example, every entry, that is x is just a single string. It's considered as a single string or a single vector in this case. Y is its, its own vector. So it, it, it's just joining all of these together. But when we have uh, a, a single vector with different components, what it does, it combines all the components. Um, I mean, I mean it, 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 it applies this str underscore c function on just one uh, one item or one component of that vector. Um, then, of course, we can also do more more, more combining of strings. And uh, here we, we we're saying we could we could add like a, a prefix or a suffix to to, to a different um, to to every component of a vector. This, this vector can be of different length. It can be of just one one length of length one, length two, length three, like like, like we're seeing right now, or it can even be uh, more. But what it does here is basically it, it's a um, it creates a prefix for each of the elements in C, uh, in, in this vector C, for example, and also creates a suffix for each of the elements for, 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 those, for those elements in the vector. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite handy. I've, I've, I personally have used this prefixing and suffixing um, in, in certain situations. Okay, so um, as, a, as a question here, we're still having the same function, string underscore c, but um, the behavior changes when we have separate, when, when we use the separate argument and when we use the collapse argument. Uh, so here, in this part here, we have the same input, for example, but we're using separate, the separate argument uh, with, with the same separator, a comma and the space. But down here, uh, we're actually using the collapse uh, separator. So what collapse does, it, it takes all the elements. It doesn't apply uh, str underscore c on each of the elements in the vector. But what it does, it actually gets all the elements and combines them together. Um, so it's a small difference, but same function. So Alan. Yes. So um, the uh 
using separator and using collapse. I think the collapse is the one that most people will be try to will try to use, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it depends on depends on, on the function on what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting difference. All right, so of course we can also do subsetting and subsetting, subsetting is always fun, getting different, comp, different parts of, of, of a string. And what, what the main thing to know here is that you use, this, you use the, 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 the function, uh, str underscore sub, and what it does, it takes as input the, the string, and this string could also be a vector, basically, like we have here, x is a vector of three um, items. And it takes the beginning part and the ending part. So, and so just the first example here, we have, uh, we, we're taking each of the items in x and uh, starting, we're taking the subset, the, the subset of elements, of, of, of letters for each of the items in x starting from one to three. So as you can see from upper, we take uh, A, P, P, which is the first three elements. Uh, banana, we take the first three elements, same for pair. And, uh, but one thing to note here is that just like any subset, we can also, we can also set subset using negatives. Okay, um, yes, uh, so, I have to think what we're we doing here. Yes, now we've moved from the basics and we're now going to, to, to the matching of, of patterns. And uh, here, what, what, what we did was uh, like in the book, what, what, what we were doing was we're, we're trying to actually identify the different patterns of, of, of each of the elements or each of the strings. So here they were using some function called uh, str.view. So the function takes the, the string and takes the pattern. So the A, the and here is, is the pattern in this case. <clears throat> Nothing really fancy to see here, but something visually for you to see what, what um, something you could use to, to visually uh, look at what the, 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 the expression or the pattern you're trying to identify is, is doing. So Alan, um, yep. CR underscore view is used to match patterns, right? Yes, yes, yeah, so, it, it's, it's used to match pattern, but just for you to, to look at it, just like it's saying, it's just for you to view. Yeah, just to view. Yeah. Uh, so which one matches pattern? Yeah, so now we, we're going to move to those okay. ones. Yeah, yeah so uh, one thing to note, the, when yeah. we're trying to match yeah. pattern. Yeah. This string view is not gonna be useful in real life, right? Because when you are, trying to, it's just for experimental purpose, right? Yeah, mainly, mainly. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Uh, yes, so basically our, the first thing we need to know when you're trying to, to match the pattern is, is, is the dot. And what it does, it matches any character except a new line. So as you could see here. So here in this example, we're saying that um, we want, from this vector of strings x, we want to match um, a letter, any letter before, any letter before the letter a, and another letter after the letter a. So we have a here, for example, for banana. In in Apple, we 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 don't have any letter before a, so we, that one is non-selected. It won't be matched. But for banana, we have a letter before and after A, same for uh, the, the pair. We have before and after A. So that's why those two elements, those two items are going to be, to, to be matched. Um, yes, uh, so basically, we, I, 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 I pointed out that uh, initially, when we're trying to create strings, we, we escape special, special characters. Uh, like like, like uh, question marks, full stops, and things like that, or even brackets. We we escape them so that they are they are, they are printed out or created uh, when 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 we can when 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 we are trying to write files and stuff like that. Uh, and one thing to see what actually this is doing is for us to use something called write lines. It is best it is a base R function used to write files. 
like in CSV or text files. So we use if you if you have it a any string that you've created and you write uh, you, you you use write files write lines uh, the write write lines function you ac can actually see what that string would output. So uh, this is very helpful when you're trying to test out special characters. But uh, so one thing to note here is that we escape special characters in strings and we also escape special characters when you're doing uh, regex or regular expression. So as an example is uh, if we want to, to tell R to look for an explicit dot, a dot is a special character like we have seen, it identifies uh, each, each of the letters. Uh, so if we want to tell R to do that, we actually have to write, we have to, we have to escape the, the dot itself in, regu in, in, in the regular expression. And for us to write the regular expression, which is escaping that dot, we have to escape the, 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 the forward slash also. So that means we'll need actually two forward slashes and the dot. So just an example here. Here in this example, we're trying to search for a dot c. And for us to search for a dot c, we write it like this. We write a uh, two forward slashes dot c. Okay. So we're still under marching, and under marching we have the, we've looked at the basic ones, the four, the, 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 the escaping, the, the dots, and uh, now we're moving to the anchors. So the anchors are basically us trying to look at uh, where things start from or where things end. And uh, we, we, if we want to look at where things start from or where the string stands from, we will look. We use something called um, the. I've forgotten what this is called, by the way. Uh, what is this called? Um, I know it has a power function. <laughs> Which one? Uh, the the power thing. And, and in mathematic exponent, right? Yeah, yeah. What well, what is it called? I don't know. I call it the heart, but I don't think that's the official name. Yeah. What? <laughs> the the heart. Yeah, <laughs> looks like a little heart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, let's I can speak my mind. Let's let's just call it power. Power. Yeah, that is exponent. Yeah. 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 So let's let's, let's just call it power because I think that's what they also use in the book. It's just just weird. But anyway, so what power means is that uh, look at something at the beginning of the string. So here in this example, if we want to look at the a the words that are starting with A, or the strings that are starting with A, we write A and we put the power at the beginning. So just as you see here. So that means start, look for the, 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 the elements or the items or the strings starting with A. We can also do the same for, for end. So we can look for the words that's, that end with A. So when it comes to the ending, we, we, we use the, 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 the money or the dollar sign. Like here. But, but excuse me. Yeah. Um, um, this is some dumb question. I don't know what the meaning of anchor in English. What is what is the meaning of that anchor? I, I, I think I think it's a, it's, it's a fuzzy meaning. Uh, but um, I don't know. <laughs> so the, the anchor is more for me. I take I take it as Ooh. more of like a like a foundation, like um. Uh, like 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 a base or something like that. Anchor. Okay. You're talking about anchor? Sorry? Yeah. Talking, yeah, it's the thing that you throw off a boat that keeps it in position. Yeah. So. Okay. That keeps the boat in position? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Okay. Anchor. Hmm. That's right. Ah, okay. Like when the boat um, reached destination, right? Yeah. Or if it wants us to, if it's not Stop. moving. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay so yeah, so the, those are two important things to, to start with. And uh, just to remember, uh, uh, Hadley mentioned this, uh, that 
you remember this by, by thinking about this expression, you begin with power and end with money. So it might be something to think about. Uh, so basically knowing this, we can do already do so many different things. We can look at uh, only the words that, uh, um, we, we can identify the words, the specific words without anything extra. So in this case, we can look at the words, for example, either starting with apple, the words ending with apple, or the, or the word apple alone, like we're doing in this example. In this example, we're looking at only the words with apple without anything else. <clears throat> um, um, yeah, so um, here the, the uh, um, exponent said the word, mm, the, the, what we are searching must start with what? Yeah, so we're saying that we're looking for, for, the, for the word that starts with the word apple and also ends with the word apple. Ah. <laughs> okay, start with the word apple and yeah. end with the word apple, right? Yeah. Not, okay, I was thinking, <laughs> I was gonna, I was thinking it's saying start with the word that start with A and end with E, but No, no, no. <laughs> so uh, in this case, it's taking it as a, as, a, as a whole. Yeah, so what you're talking about is going to be slightly different. Um, I, think, I think we might be able to, to, yeah. to look into so, it. Yeah, so we are forcing it to match complete string, right? Yes. Ah, not like subset. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, so uh, of course now we can do more slightly more advanced things, but still based on a certain um, character, what they call character classes. And we've looked at already one, the one character class, which is the dot. And the dot matches any character apart from the new line or even things like uh, space. Uh, but if we want to match digits, we use uh, uh, forward slash D. Uh, if you want to match white space, uh, any space tab, new line, we use forward slash S. And uh, we can also use um, the block brackets. So whenever, whatever we have, whenever you have the block brackets and we have something in the block brackets, that translates into an or statement. So we either, we, we can match any of the items in the block brackets. So here, it's not like we are putting emphasis that it must have A, B, C, but yeah. any of this can happen, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. And so we can also now create uh, a negation. Negation. Okay. This yeah. is negation. Yeah, this is negation. Uh -huh. So any, any except ABC. I had to read the book and come back to realize that this is negation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I read some time, but it doesn't click to me that just a negation. I mean, but when you put it just in right now, it is better to click to someone. Do you understand? Like, yeah. When, yeah. When you have the point, just the negation, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So, so I put I put a note here that uh, so in regex we want to write this, but we create these regex expressions using strings using a string notation. So for us to communicate to R that we want to write this kind of regex expression, that means we need to actually escape the forward slash. So if we want to write for forward slash D, we instead add another forward slash like this. If we want to write forward slash S, we write another forward slash um, for, 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 for. Ah, okay. So you mean here, whenever we want to match any digit or space, we must put <laughs> double slash, right? Forward slash. Yes, yes, if we're creating it in, 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 uh, in, in R. Oh, only in R. Um, I think, I've, I haven't really done much in Python. But it should be the same thing, because most of these are special characters. Are actually, also special characters, like in most of the languages. Yeah, so it might might, might be the same I thing. Think it's the same, maybe. Like, I mean, I don't know, right? Yes, I don't know. Yeah, it might be the same thing. I believe. Okay. Because same way we create strings in Python. All right. So here, um, what 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 I have is that uh, I've talked about the special characters right, where we, we, we actually had to 
to to forward slash to 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 forward slash the the asterisk the the, the, the the dot for example if we want to write the dot and uh, we can actually do this by just putting something in the block brackets what they are calling um what are they calling it um I forgot what they are calling it what uh, yeah, the block brackets anyway no 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 problem uh, so we have these special characters or the meta characters but uh normally what we've been talking about before is that we use we we back we escape them with the forward slash but instead of escaping them we could actually just put put them in uh the block brackets so as you're seeing here so what what we're trying to, to identify here is we're trying to identify um any strings that um that have a c and the c is preceded by an asterisk and that asterisk is preceded by a dot or you can put it the other way around you have um a dot an asterisk and and a c so we can write that by just avoiding the the forward slashes put what we needed to 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 escape with the forward slashes in the block brackets and that will be fine. <coughs> so, so here. Okay, good. Go on. Yeah. So here we have this example, and we want to identify uh, something like this. Any let any letter, asterisk C. So we can just use the dot to identify the letter, the asterisk put in a uh, block brackets, and the letter C, and that will be. That would be just perfect for this task. Like you see here. Okay, so one one uh, something to note is that uh, this kind of is alternative to to meta characters. So, for example, putting uh, something in, in in the block brackets does not work uh, for everything. However, of course, it works for all of these. Um, Special characters or meta characters that we have: the dollar sign, the dots, the the O sign, uh, the question mark, the asterisk. But it's not going to work for uh, some of the, the 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 characters. For example, the block brackets, the forward slash itself. So every forward slash we're going to write it as before. Every power sign we're going to write it as before, and every um, dash sign we're going to write it as before. By before, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that we're going to escape it. We're going to write the forward slash and write uh, that, 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 that uh, meta character itself. Um, yes, so just to continue, uh, we can actually use something called an alternation to pick between one or more alternative patterns. So it's more like saying an O in this case. So here we are trying to we're trying to pick out the, the 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 British and American gray colors. So we can say that we can say that uh, we write the 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 letters G R, and we either select the letter E or A. One of them, then we add the Y. So this will help us actually uh, uh, extract or match the, the the two words gray with E and gray with a i guess they sound different when you pronounce them so this alternation is also going to be important moving forward okay so um i'm going to try to go through these ones a little bit faster there's something called about something called repetition so we can actually write things to show that uh something we want to identify only one zero or one uh, of, of, of the patterns that we, that we, that we're writing, for example, we, in this case for zero and one, we use the question mark to uh, to say that oh, identify only one of the patterns, zero or one of the patterns. Uh, in the same way, we have another one that shows that we can we want to identify one or more of the patterns. So here we use the plus plus sign here. So just identify the pattern that you want and you add the plus sign. Uh, and we can also say zero or more, basically. So there are three kinds of repetition that uh, the string R has. Uh, this might not make so much sense, I guess, right now, but we shall, we shall see. 
but but at the same time, you can actually the, there is a, a a more precise way of, of writing these repetitions. So you can say that you can add, for example, if you have a pattern of C and you want to identify how many Cs you want to you want to extract from from something, you add these brackets, the curly brackets, and put the number of, the number of times you want to add, you want to match that 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 pattern. So in this case, it is just two Cs that you want to have. Uh, you can do more stuff. You can say at most M M M M Cs. You can say at least uh, uh, N N N Cs. You can also say um, between a certain number between N and M M Cs, for example. So in this example, we have uh, we want to only identify between one and and two Cs. So that's why we're only identifying only these ones here. You could add, you could change this two to three, and it will be identifying C, 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 all the Cs, basically, in uh, in, 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 in this string. So repetition makes it now. When you look at repetition, we are we move into the more I don't know a little bit confusing thing, but um, yeah, it's it, it's also interesting. We're now moving also to the more interesting stuff. Okay, so one thing I didn't really understand very well was uh, grouping and back referencing. So basically, uh, here, I'll just use this example. Like in this example, we're trying to uh, find all the fruits that have a repeated pair of letters. So we, what we know is that the dots, the dots are, are, are saying that we want two letters. So, and, and two letters in this case, um, I don't even know how to explain this. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I understand. Okay, so what this expression is saying is that we, we, we identify two letters, any two letters. So in this case, for example, you, you, you're going to have A and N for banana. Then if you look at the, the, the two forward slashes and one, it is, it is actually a reference to the previously uh, identified pattern. So in this case, if you're looking at banana, it will have a n a n because it identifies the first two letters, then repeats them. If um, you, um, what does that two forward slash and one means? Sorry, two forward slash. And one, what does it mean? What's the meaning of two forward slash and the one? Oh yeah, so so this is just a this is just a, spe, a special um a special regex uh, language uh, trying which is used for back referencing. Yeah, so what I'm saying is like we know when we have forward slash we do escaping one. Yeah. I mean, what one here means? Do you have an idea what one here means? Because yes. we don't escape one normally because one what in what brings one here because we are not referencing to any later and i don't know yeah so so here, here is, is just referencing the first the first um the first matched pair of of, of, of letters so basically you, you could of course ideally you could you, you you could you could say that uh the the matching is going to could, could actually identify b and a O A and N, ideally, it could do that. It can do that, but um, just take it that uh, forward slash one references the first matched item, and we have an example later on when when we are doing uh, replacing, and we we have forward slash two forward slashes one and another forward slash two, and that that might help to 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 explain why why we are using forward slash uh, one in this case. But it's just a back. It's just a referencing, uh, 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 referencing syntax for 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 regex. I don't know. Does, does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, but but referencing is 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 a bit tricky. Uh, I'm yet also to understand it very well. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we're moving to like the last part, the last big part of, 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 of this. 
and is the tools or applications. I call, I call it application myself. So this is where we actually determine which strings match uh, a, a pattern. Because right now we've been seeing, we've been, we've been using str, dot, str underscore view, which is more of like just viewing and looking at it. Uh, now we're going to, to, to match, identify them, uh, find the positions of the matches, extract those, con those, those matches, replace the matches with, with new values, and then we can also do other stuff like splitting um, a string. We can split, basically, you can split a string and you split a, a, a string, put it back, and do other things. So, back to your uh, question of how to detect the matches. Uh, so here in 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 string r there is a function called det uh, str underscore detect, and what it does, you give it uh, the, the 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 string or a vector of of strings, and you give it a pattern, in this case e. So what it does, it actually uh, it it, um, it returns a, a logical vector, true or false. And you can use this logical vector to 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 subset uh, your 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 vector so that you can extract actually or filter the vector. So this is pretty pretty okay. And uh, here we're just using the letter E, very simple pattern. But we can use fancier patterns like we're going to see or like some of them we've seen before. So for example, we can also see uh, we can also try to identify the words that. Uh, start with T, letter T. Uh, this word here is, is a collection, it's, it's like a corpus of words in, in, in which comes with this uh, string R library. And so it's, it's like a very long vector of words. Uh, so, we, so from those, since we have zeros and ones, we can basically do anything, we can get the sum, we can get the mean of, 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 of anything that we've matched. Yeah, so here, the last one mean is anything that that ends with vowels, right? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, end with vowel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because anything we put in, in, in these block yeah. brackets is, oh, you know. is an O. Okay. Yes, uh, so we, 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 can, we, we can do fancier things, but uh, in, in, in this, in this uh, on this slide, basically, the, the main point is there's so many different ways of doing things. Uh, but, it, so for example, if you, if you want to identify um, the words containing at least one vowel, we can, we can, we can do this. You could create, create uh, we, we can create a logical vector using detect and negate it. So the truths become false and the false become, become true. Then we subset our, 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 our vector. Uh, at the same time, you can also do something fancier like this without using the negation. You can use something like this, uh, which we don't have to explain right now, uh, but it's going to return the same thing. However, this is a bit more complicated. Complicated for someone to read, also complicated for you to understand. So until you reach this level of just building something like this, it might be better to break things down into the smaller, smaller pieces. All right. Uh, yes, so uh, so since subset, since, since str underscore detect returns um, uh, a, a, a logical vector, which we can use to subset, our vector like here like this it is this can work very well however there's also a simpler way which is uh, using str underscore subset so str, str underscore subset does basically what you see up here it runs the detect uh, of a pattern and subsets it at the same time so you can use whatever you want here uh, str subset is of course uh, less code to write and and of course since uh, str underscore detect is is is, uh, is returning um a logical vector we can use it when we have tables or when we have data frames in in, in our filters um like this because the filters always take uh logical vectors as 
uh, all logical conditions as input. So, so nothing fancy here. Uh, I, I think what they're doing is that they're creating a, they're taking the word vector, creating a, a cre creating a, a, a table of two columns, one with the words and another one with, with the with the generated sequence, and filtering the words that end with X. Oops. Uh, yes, I was here. All right. So, um, of of course, uh, this, this is this is nothing uh, really new. Since we could actually run uh, mean, for example, or or sum on on str detect, we can also do uh, str count. So, what str count does? It detects and counts at the same time. So. Uh, there's just this is just presenting a new function called str account. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, how about ex extracting? So I'm going to show you how to extract um, the 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 matched words or the matched patterns um, in in uh, in in a sentence or in or in a vector. So we're going to use uh, sentences, a corpus of sentences. Uh, that comes with the, with, the, with the library, and just to look at what to show you what, what they look like, it's just he, here. These ones here. So, um, if you want to match a sentence, basically the first thing you need to do is you need to create um, you, need, you need to create a pattern, a, a, a regex uh, a regex pattern, and we can create it in different ways, but in this case, we want to identify the the, the the, the, the colors or the sentences that have colors in them. So what we do, we get all the colors we want to identify, then we uh, collapse them using str underscore c and collapse. So they're going to come up with, come out like this. Everything is combined. And this regex basically means that uh, either of these colors, if a sentence has either of these colors, any of these colors, then it is, it is matched, it is extracted. So that's what we're doing here. We're trying to use the uh, str subset, which runs uh, str underscore detect of this pattern of, of, of colors and uh, subsets the sentence, the, the sentence corpus or sentence vector. So down here, what we have are the sentences that have colors in them. So the first one has uh, blue, uh, then the second one has blue also, and things like that. So basically, the next thing we have to do is that we need to, uh, we need to find out what colors have actually been matched so that I don't have to go through it myself. So for that, we use a new function called str, uh, str extra extract. And so str extract, you, 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 you give it the, the matched vector which is the one has colors and the pattern that you have so it returns uh, all the colors that are that are matched in that sense so just that uh, one thing to note here is that str underscore e extract only matches the first item or extracts the first item but if you want to identify all the items in the sentence all the colors in the sentence then you have to use str underscore extract underscore all. So the all function sort of like how they sound, you get everything that, 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 that has been matched, not just the first item, the function finds. Okay. Um, so there's something called grouped matches, and this is really, really old. I didn't really understand the, the, the idea. And uh, I think, um, I don't know even to, <laughs> what to say about this one here. It was, it was interesting to look at, but uh, it, was, it was not really well explained according to me. So I can't really say much about this. Uh, I don't know, did someone look at this one here? Group matches? I'm just trying to remember it.
Yeah, it was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 I didn't really get it. I think it made more sense because one of the exercises had you pull out if it comes after a number to pull uh, out the number and the word that comes after it, and I could see how that might be useful. Oh, okay. That might, that might make better sense. I didn't try that exercise yet. Yeah. Um, but, what, hmm? what, he, what, Ruth, what, what are you saying? I'm saying I think it maybe makes more sense. One of the exercises for the grouped matches section asks you to pull out like any time there's a number followed by a word. Ah. Sort of see why that might be useful. And it also has one where it looks for words with apostrophes in, contracted words, pull out the piece before and after the the apostrophe. So I think it's maybe just this example was a bit hard to understand. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. But um, yeah, maybe we'll come, we'll look at the example. Yeah, we can move. Yeah, well, okay. So try to move on. Um, so we just look at replace now. So of course, just like extract, we have replace. Uh, str underscore replace. I also have str underscore replace underscore all if you want to replace everything. So uh, for example, if you want to replace uh, all the vowels, any, any vowel, if you want to replace a vowel, uh, we use str underscore replace. So if you want to replace the vowel, any, any vowel with the dash, we, we just use that. But if we want to replace all the vowels with, with the, a dash, then we use str underscore replace underscore all. Like that. And we can also do uh, replacing with uh, a named vector. So for example, we can say that uh, replace all elements uh, in this, all, all, all the names in this vector, that is one, two, and three, by the, 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 the supplied uh, values, that is one, the words one, two, and three. So, so as, this is actually quite, quite, quite useful. Uh, okay, so uh, then we're gonna also split so moving on to, to splitting, we can split the the, the string with by 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 any in any separator. So it can be a, a space, it can be a it can be a comma, it can be um, uh, a semi a, a semicolon, for example, like what 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 we're seeing here. And we can also identify uh, how many elements we want to split, or how many elements we want to return. Uh, so. For for example, uh, here, if you look at the first example, what it returns when we split, we, it returns a list. So here, I only, I, I only got one of the sentences and I split it by the space. So it returns a list, more like a list. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a list of, of, of the words. Uh, but if you, if you just look at the next example, whereby we have um, a, 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 a vector of, of, of strings, and we want to split uh, the content of each of the each of the elements in that vector by the the column, the semicolons. Uh, then we can actually um, use something called simplify true. What simplify true does is that it removes the list the the the, the, the list from from which is produced normally by a string uh, split. This list here. And turns it into um, into a matrix or a data frame, in this case. Uh, and so, what the n is equal to two is doing is just identifying the maximum number of uh, split items you're going to you're going to come up with. So, in this case, we of course we so use this because we only have two elements to split. But it would have made sense if you had another semicolon. Uh, for example, in this entry, if you had another semicolon and adding a last name, then having n is equal to two here would only give you the 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 the, the name, country, age, and the first name, for example. Uh, yes. So, but anyway, quick thing to note here is that we can definitely, after knowing what string split returns, we can actually uh, do some kind of indexing from it and extract whatever I want to extract. For example, using this kind of thing, we can extract the, the, the given uh, 
elements of the list. Here, I'm just extracting the first list. Okay, so um, here is different patterns uh, of this different ways of creating the regex, uh, which is, uh, I don't know, something to, 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 to think about. Uh, we'll just skip a little bit over that. And uh, my favorite was uh, this one here, using the, the, the directory, for example. So this is very good if you're actually trying to read different um, data files and combining them later on, but they're all in, this, in the same directory. So you could identify, you could, for example, select all the um, files that end with .rmd, all the, all, all the R markdown files. I could be identified in this case. So you could basically you could you could replace this RMD by CSV or TX, TXT, for example, and that, that that can just give you a a vector, like like you're seeing here. Then loop over the vector to read it. Yes. So um, I think that's that's really it. Uh, this last part here is just for you to to search for functions that you don't know, but. I don't, I didn't really see the main use of that, at least for me so far. And just to summarize, um, string R is actually a wrapper or it's built upon uh, another package called stringy. And stringy is a wider package. It has more functions, more, more functionality. So if you can't do something in string R, you might as well think about uh, stringy. Uh, yeah, but I think for, 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 for us who are just starting out with regex, this, this is just going to be enough.